myself Ankit Shivare and today we are going to the problem session 8. So question is uh, ID1 and ID2 is given in figure. Okay, so this is my ID1 that is going to the transistor M1 and this is ID2 that is going to the transistor M2. Now you have been asked what is the value of uh, Vn1 minus Vn2 for the two currents to be equal, right? But you see here the width in the second transistor is more, right? So you can ask that ID1 and ID2 you have to keep equal. But what is the value of V in 1 minus V in 2 should be so that same current will pass through the both M1 and M2, okay? So we know this equation, right? That is the second order equation that we have ID is equal to beta n by 2, which is when beta is whole square. So beta n is mu n square is to while, right? We know one more thing that ID1 plus ID2 that will sum up to ISS, right? So this is the one more equation that we have. Okay, so this is one and this is one more. So we have been given ID1 is equal to ID2 is equal to ISS by 2, right? So if suppose we re-equate from this equation, what we will get is V1 is Vth n plus under root 2 ID1 by beta n. Similarly for V in 2, right? Now ID1 and ID2 are equal, that is ISS by 2. So when we substitute here, we will get this term, right? But beta 1 and beta 2 are different, right? So when we put V in 1 minus V in 2, so we will get this under root ISS, Vth n will cancel of both the transistor, we are assuming that threshold voltage of both the transistor are same, we will get this 1 by under root beta n1 minus 1 by under root of beta n2. Okay, so here we know that second transistor is twice the width of first one, right? So if we substitute for C, so this is the value that we should get. Now suppose we see in the plot, so this is the plot for ID1 with respect to V1 minus V2. So when W value of both the transistors are equal, this crossing point will be in the middle. But since the W value of second transistor is more, second transistor W value is more, so definitely the current that it will pass will be more for the same input, right? So what we are seeing here is that V in 1 to put to get up the same current ISS by 2, to get up the same current ISS by 2, V in 1 will have to be more compared to V in 2. You are getting what I am saying? I am saying is that V in 1 should be greater than V in 2 to have ID1 equal to ID2. The reason is that W by L of 1 is less than W by L of 2. So overdrive has to be more. Okay, I think it is clear now. So that's why we are getting this figure, right? So V in 1 minus V in 2 here is positive. Okay, so V in minus V in 2 is positive here. <coughs> Similarly, for the second case, you can understand by similar logic. So, at this point, ISS by 2, the V in 1 minus V in 2 will be under root of ISS by beta in 1 minus 1 by under root beta, 1 by under root under root 2. Okay. Now, assuming the second part of the question would be, if you have to get V in 1 equal to V in 2, but you need what will be the ID1 and ID2 difference should be. What I am saying is that the common mode V in 1 and V in 2 are same. What is the ID1 and ID2 difference will be in that case, okay? So that is second part. I am putting extra part here, okay? It's not given the problem, but I am putting up. So V1 is equal to V2, what is the ID1 and ID2? So we know this term again. This equation we know, okay? Second order equation and this is the summation case here. So since ID1 will be beta n by 2 and ID2 will be twice of beta n, okay? Because W value of is, is double. So when we put here, that is equivalent to twice of ID1, okay? So 2 ID1, instead of ID2, we can put up 2 ID1 plus ID1 is equal to ISS. So ID1 will be ISS by 3. Similarly, ID2 we can get it is 2 ISS by 3, okay? So the current will be 1 by 3rd in first one and second one will be twice 3rd. So current will doubles, okay? So hope you enjoyed the session. We will be seeing further problems. In